Coming back in seven, six, five, four, three. Tons of energy coming back at a commercial break. Hello, folks. Welcome back. For I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom, and I'm back, baby. Back from my week of chaos. For they were legion. We were few, but we held the line. Yep, speed week is over. That video is going up price tomorrow. A couple things I have to do. I have to, I don't have that much editing, just adding stuff. And I have to make a video. I can do that after this. That won't take long. I don't know. I'll see how I feel. But I am back to probably 90%. Mainly because when I work speed week, I just don't get to sit down and watch race cars go around. No, that's a very common misconception. I get to make volunteers cry, yell at um, vendor staff, tell people no, tell them you cannot smoke wherever you feel like smoking, which is weird. A lot of people got over that after they got in high school. They, when you can't smoke in the bathroom anymore. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it's just that's an old person thing. I don't know. But saw people puke. Saw people who can't use escalators. Saw people who can't use steps. And I saw a couple. Of, well, I heard a couple of getting it on. Yeah. In the stadium. That's how exciting the races were. They would rather play tonsil hockey in the stadium than watch cars go around in a circle. That doesn't sound like that bad of an idea now that I think about it. But now I'm back to my, well, at least right now, back to where I should be, back to my normal pro wrestling show. Because heaven knows I know absolutely nothing about racing other than cars go in a circle. And there's fireworks on the end of races. Only reason why I'm there... They pay me, and I get to see fireworks for free. It's all good. So let's start off with what happened this weekend that I missed when I had to go deal with people. First of all, <laughs> wow. Some of my predictions were so goofy. And I'll, I'll touch on some things. First of all, I had no idea that the Elimination Chamber for being a premium, for, for being a premium, premium event just looked like a very overpaid house show with a ton of pyro. Pyro is always good though, and heaven knows that Saudi government can actually afford that. I think I actually, wow, I did good. For the matches that I did guess, because I only knew of four of them, but then I didn't watch. I literally came home from work, shoveled food in my mouth, went to bed, and repeat the next day for six days straight. So I've been, like, dead to the world, as far as I know. As far as I know, Russia already, like, nuked the Ukraine or were at war with Russia, and I just don't know about it. As far as I know, the Russians are crushing, crossing the Atlantic right now, or, or Pacific, whichever is easier for them. Who knows? I, as far as I know, we're, we're at World War Four already. So someone's already come up with the cure for COVID-19. And who knows what other weird things have happened. Aliens landed in Australia. I have no clue. So let's go what I do know. Um, I predicted four, a whopping four, four matches at, Elish, at Elimination Chamber. I somehow managed to get three right. I knew Roman Reigns was going to win. I knew Becky Lynch was going to win. I, I figured Rhea Ripley would win. But yeah, she did not. Bianca Belair did. Rhea should have. Rhea. We have to end this view with Nikki Glenn Cross. That's just bring that's that's lowering the value of Rhea Ripley. And I knew Brock Lesnar would win the men's elimination chamber. I had no idea Austin Aries would do something stupid like low blow Brock Lesnar's like that's like poking a bear, man. Bad move, Austin Aries. Or Austin not Austin Aries. I'm sorry. I'm confusing with someone else. I mean Austin Theory. 
Yeah, don't poke the bear. Um, so what I will give a wind good feel like for boost level like nah, you're Ripley. Um So I only got one wrong. That puts I didn't get all the matches. I'll 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 just say I stole the notes from Stephanie McMahon's desk. I think that was Saturday morning too. I was probably halfway to work. Um, since I'm on that page, Impact had a whole bunch of matches that I had no idea I had. And in fact, out of the matches I got, I, that I knew that were going to happen, that they advertised, I think, I think like two weeks ahead of time. Because remember, Speed Week, I, as far as I know, there's like killer squirrels in my backyard. I mean, there's, there's Nazi undead raccoons roaming the streets of Daytona Beach, as far as, I, as, far as, I, as far as I know. But yeah, so Impact, I knew they were going to be five matches. I figured they, they, they always throw in like some odd match. But I'll tell you what, I only got one wrong. Eddie Edwards from Team Impact turned on his buddies and Honor No More won. I guess the fact that Moose would retain his title. Mickey James, I guess nothing exciting happened during that. No bras coming off or bursting, panties ripping. I don't know, I should see the replay of that. Um, the Bullet Club, the OG Bullet Club. And once you're Bullet Club, you are too sweet for life or in this case Tomatonga isn't Tomatonga got the heart out from Bullet Club because he wasn't for life so yeah so that was pretty cool uh, Jay White the Switchblade again Bullet Club for life defeated the man with a gravelous voice and Eric Young. Again, I predicted that. Yeah. So I, I did pretty good. You know what? Again, Stephanie McMahon has to put a better password on her computer. So I guessed all of her notes. What I didn't know... And I want to see replays of this. This sounds like your typical triple A cluster mess. Where you spend $1 million on the arena and the setup. They had it outdoors and it rained the whole show. That's hilarious. Um, the production value was just... They spend a $1 million on the ring. They spend $10 million on the talent. And then, they, they must have my evil twin, who knows even less about production, come produce their show for them. Wow. Um, I only got two matches right. No, I didn't even get them right. Why not? Oh, wow. That's right. I only got one match right. And that was, I guess, Ty, I guess Ty Valkyrie would win. It was Flama, Marvella, Lady Shana, and I don't, I don't, I don't even know who the th fourth lady was. They all fell to Ty Valkyrie. Um, Bandito did not win the sword, because I guess that's not elimination anymore. <laughs> what impressive. Who won that? Familia Real won, or La Impresa won. I just know Nueve Generation NGD lost, but by DQ and a tag team triple threat match? When does AAA ever have DQs? They just cart people out on stretchers. Guys with flamethrowers. 
walking to ringside. I have no idea. Um, yeah, Sexy Stars team lost. It wasn't Willie Mack because he was over there in Impact. Should have known better. But the team of Mr. Iguana, Nino Hamburguesa, and whoever else that was lost. You know what, folks? I couldn't even figure out that it was just going to be... Who the heck was... I didn't shoot... Yeah, I only chose one right. You know what? And that is the super obvious one. Well, that's a Mardi Gras match that's coming up. So you know what, folks? I'm going to give myself the ultimate insult. I probably deserve it. I, 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 I'm just some disinterested mark, in, mark here. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. So with all that being said, I do have some thank yous to give out. And I always like to give the thank yous out kind of at the beginning of the show. Let's see if I got these names right. Orange Kraken. You, sir, because, yeah, we, we agreed. What, what happens to Becky Lynch's Heine? You, sir, win by six count. Dueno RJ, there's the master of the air guitar.
And Tom Tomoka, you're just there chilling out. You know what? I'll give you a good one. Holy shit. I'll vary that up a little bit, and I'm going to go to a new camera, because I've already goofed up the timing on this one, because I did my two, two ooh, actually, I think, no, nah, there it goes again, but yeah, so you know what's going to happen, folks, I shall be right back, let me deal with camera issues, maybe, I think it's sped up for a little bit, try to keep up with me, but. So, yep, let me go back to some notes. I shall return. And I'm back, baby. Hopefully things are a little bit more in sync. So, again, this show is for Monday Night Raw. Because I write in my recap about the weekend. I've given out my thank yous. Yeah, and thank you guys very much. So let's talk about some Monday Night Raw because I was able to watch that. Got some turkey sandwiches, some chips. I just ate turkey and slept and rehydrated. I literally like just refet, refueled and rehydrated my body today. That's all you can really do. Uh, seriously, we start off, we have an Elimination Chamber recap. Saudis do put all the money. That, that's where the money goes for my gasoline, a Saudi fireworks. Uh, Brock Lesnar comes in, he says, yeah, I'll see you next, next Friday, Paul Heyman. Then we go backstage for a Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens interview. They have a chance to make their tag team match a three-way, but we'll see what happens. Um, first match of the night. Be very careful of this camera. I think my computer is getting old. Um, it was Alpha Academy versus Street Profits. I'll tell you what, watching Chad Gable do his freestyle wrestling moves and the fact that Montez Ford can flow with it so well. Oh, it's so good. Such a pretty sight. Again, the great freestyle, oh, freestyle wrestling style is so good. Uh, Ford, he has that high drop kick. Man, I know that ring springy. It's not that springy, though. Otis is just too big, too much of a clubbing guy. Says He at least has legitimate clubs. Like, I think his club to the back might actually hurt. It just makes a thud noise, too. I like me some thud. No knee slapping. No thigh slapping. I only have thuds, baby. Thuds and suds. That's how I like my pro wrestling. Watching some thudding going on. Drinking a nice cold beer thud. Uh, let's see. Where was he? Alpha Academy. Again, they saved each other on the outside. That was good. Uh, Dawkins takes out everyone. I didn't realize Dawkins could fly. I know he has a lot of other good moves. Otis, however. He just says, I hate everyone. Get out of my way. It's like, could Otis be the next member? The Hate Club? Oh, wow. Indeed. We'll have to see about that. Um, Chad Gable then, amazing catch in Northern Lights, Bergen Suplex. Catches Ford off, coming off the top rope. So pretty looking. Uh, Dawkins, he gets a hot tag. He has a, I'll call it a butterfly neckbreaker. That looks amazing. Three Profits. They do a blockbuster doomsday thing. That's awesome to see. Otis, however, just falls on Ford. Because um, Ford tried to pick him up in a body slam. Yeah, that wasn't happening. Kind of falls on him. That was pretty cool. Um, whole, uh, does like a little roll. Yeah, falls on him, which was pretty good. Just goes for the pin right there. Chad Gable holds his foot down. Alpha Academy gets the one, two. And three, solid match, good cheeseburger match. My only problem with Raw, Raw is very bookended. Really good at the beginning, really good at the end. That middle hour is just like pure filler. We did have a Tommaso Ciampa interview, and then 
the real rock and roller, Prince Devitt, comes out. Because he is too sweet for life. You know, I'll call him Prince Devitt or, or Prince Balor. Fargo Devitt. Prince Devitt. Of Bullet Club joins Tommaso Ciampa. The Psycho Killer. Wow, you have the Psycho Killer and the real rock and roller. Tagging up. That's pretty cool sounding. Uh, they take on the Dirty Dogs. Dirty Dogs. I'll give them this much. At least they have matching gear and they mesh well together. Again, the way they work together. The good double teams. Champ with the big chops. And then he, when he went for the pin, he used the Americana. I'm like, oh, was he like Dolph? No, hey. We're winning this match. The right way, the easy way, or the hard way. Americana and all snap stuff. I saw that and I'm like, wait a second, why is he is he going for the half Nelson? I'm like, oh no, he's he's going for a key lock in that position. That's the Americana. Uh oh. Someone did something to piss someone off. That's not good. It's like, yeah, I might be NXT. I'll break your arm anyway, just because I feel like it. So that was pretty that's nasty. Uh, Finman flies over the top. Dolph, yeah, he definitely knows his ringside mannerisms. Um, it's great at talking in the ring. He had the like, kind of like stretched chin lock applied. Uh, we could not hit the neck breaker. Finn Balor got the hot tag in. The diving hot tag, or the dual tag. Uh, uh, Rude fed into him pretty good. Uh, Ciampa did the sunset flip pin. That was weird. Maybe they just weren't having... Maybe Ciampa's like, screw this. I'm going to beat you up anyway. Tommaso Ciampa and Prince Balor win. It was kind of a weird ending. I'll tell you what. I saw the Americana cheeseburger match. Then this is where it gets to be the big slog of the match. The big slog of the show. Starting right after that match. Almost, I think it was the 8.55 hour. Um, we have Miz TV. And everyone's waiting for the arrival of Cody Rhodes. Because we want to see Miz's tag team partner. Who's, who's dashing. Who's been a star. And we're all like... He has a nationally syndicated TV program. He's built up his empire. And left it. And it's like, Cody Rhodes is going to be on? Like, or would it be Brandy Rhodes? Or would it be both? But no, it's Logan Paul. And after that, it's like, huh? What? No, we, no, this, this isn't right. Where, where's Cody's music? Really? WWE, you suck. Boo, Logan Paul. I honestly didn't know who he was until I asked a friend. And, like, people don't like him. He's done things. Oh, yeah, by the way, folks, if you see petitioners asking you to, to legalize recreational marijuana for for adults, I'm just like, no. Like, I don't care. No. It's bad enough as is walking these streets and having to drive with drunk people. Much less stoned people. You know, that's the next thing, stone driving. I think the cops would actually get you more for, well, I know the cops used to get, get you more for possession. If you are driving under the influence of the wacky tobacco, you still can get your driving under the influence ticket, though. So, yeah. Watch out for hobos like me. Killing hobos is doing their aluminum collecting bad. Um, then we had Rhea Ripley versus oh, Nick, Nikki Glenn Cross. And I'll tell you what, Rhea Ripley, she just goes right after Nikki, which should be good. Nikki just says, like, random clubbing. Like, your eight-year-old sister realizes that you, like, kicked your doll around. She's like... Eah, 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 eah. Then you're just like, yeah. And like, you pick her up underneath the arms and say, no, you don't do that. And, like, throw her on the bed. Yeah, guess what? That doesn't happen. Um, 
Yeah, and then it was the Riptide, and I really didn't care. Uh, Rhea Ripley wins. Nikki Glenn crossed must have lost, lost her yellow with Funk somewhere. I just want to, if, if they're, they're going to keep up this stupid superhero turned villain gimmick, like either those clothes have to get tattered, they have to get a little more sweat stain, should be some blood stain, maybe a mustard stain or something. Um, or, or it turns black, like goes from nice shiny blue to dull blue to like black. And like parts of it are missing and she just looks like a complete hot mess. Only way they could save that poor character of Nikki Glenn Cross. This is going nowhere. Rhea Ripley is being brought down by this. It's a piece of toast. And it's just the whole storyline. Nikki Cross's gimmick. And those just weak eight-year-old girl clubbing eight-year-old sister clubbing blows for kicking her dolly. Like, nah. Like, me Ripley's just... Sorry. Damien Priest then took on Sheldon Benjamin. This was a little bit more of a pick-me-up. Priest. Yes, he uses elbows a lot. He uses them every different way. And the turnbuckle running Judas effect is that big spin kick. Uh, Sheldon did hit a T-bone suplex. So Sheldon Benjamin... It's not bereft of offense. He just doesn't, he's just not allowed to get a lot in. Cedric Alexander, sorry, because I guess together they're known as the Hurt Business. And the Hurt Business was disbanded by Bobby Lashley. <laughs> Maybe it just sounds cool. It, well, it does sound cool, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, Priest uh, hit the South of Heaven chokeslam. And then the, 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 the Reckoning, whatever that is. Damian Priest wins. Maybe Cody Rhodes will come in and take him on. He did open. A, he didn't give an open challenge in two weeks. I guess that's the next pay per view. Why do I think WrestleMania was always in April though? I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to pay more attention again. I've been dead, I've been dead to the world. I've been in my own little corner of the world for the better part of a week, so I still have no clue what's going on. Going to work's gonna suck tomorrow. It's all going to be different. He'll probably say, You're fired! I'd be like, okay. But yeah, that's a whole other issue. Yeah, this match is better. Ham sandwich of a match. They still should treat Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander better than they do. That's my opinion. And we had Regia, Reggie come out, try to explain things, trying to make good with Dan Brooke. Yeah, he kind of laid down the ring for her. Every time he went, Dana Brooke went to pin him, he'd kick out, and then Dana Brooke, oh, there was some hot tongue action there. Yeah, I, I stayed down for this three count with her. So she is the, I'm just kind of disappointed. There was no finger po poke of doom. It's like, whatever. It was funny, though. It was spit being swapped. It'll be a can of soup. Again, we had more of the women. Um, elimination Chamber replay. Not that great. Uh, Bianca Bella came out. She cut a promo. Becky Lynch was there. You know, this is where I started to give all my thank yous out. Because Becky Lynch lost her booty. And and she has smaller breasts. I'm like, I, th I thought those were the two areas on, on a woman who just gave birth to a baby that got bigger. Her, 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 her breasts got bigger and her butt got bigger. But no. Becky found, like, something... And everything got smaller on her. Becky Lynch doesn't look cute anymore. I like steampunk Becky Lynch the best. Uh, but Bianca Belair had a match against Dewdrop. Um, that's okay. Dewdrop's too strong. Bianca Belair. Um, uh, Dewdrop's too strong for Bianca Belair at the beginning. Bianca Belair is too agile for Dewdrop in the beginning. Um, again, Bianca Belair did some like handspring kick and then go, went to the outside. That was fun. 
Again, Bianca Belair, she has some ups, too. I don't know how people can jump that high. If I tried doing that, I'd probably fall on my neck and relocate a and re-dislocate a shoulder again. But yeah, um, on the outside, she goes over the over the top rope and just kind of runs as a fun, fun splash. Um, two drive kind of gets up after a little bit. Does the same thing to her af after Bianca Belair um, yaps with Be Becky Lynch for a little bit. Uh, and Bianca Belair, she did hit a spine buster. I guess they're just picking someone off, off their feet, dropping them. And in that, that backflip moonsault. That's pretty cool looking. Then she did something to, to do drop. I don't know. There was like a weird drop where I'm like. Just every so often. Bianca Belair is a good wrestler. But every so often she does something botchy. Like she, she's not sure what to do. Maybe a hesitance. The best word like. Well do I do this here? It just kind of looks weird. Uh, Dewdrop did hit the Michinoku driver on her. Bianca Belair powered out and eventually KOD Dewdrop after you saw Dewdrop literally walk up the turnbuckles to help her to get to help her. Like she had the one foot on, then she had the second, then eventually she was there. Bianca showed her struggle, and then Dewdrop put her next foot on the second turnbuckle, and that was enough. So yeah, so with a little assistance. From Dewdrop. This is pro wrestling. Wait, yeah, that's right. This is pro wrestling anyway. Bianca Belair won. I don't know. This was like the beginning of the third hour, and I'm still like in the, the, the mid hour slog. Ham sandwich match. Great. Uh, Edge wants to work a match with AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Yeah, I'm cool with that. And we had RK Bro versus Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens in our main event match. Uh, Kevin Owens and Riddle start. It's good. Good. Great reversals and counters. I mean, say what you will about Kevin Owens' fatness and Matt Riddle's highness. Yeah, stonerness. They're great in the ring. Everyone's, oh, chanting Seth's theme. Part of me wonders if that was piped in. We'll probably never find out. Matt Riddle hit a great judo throw again. I forget what exactly they called it. They screw up the names of all those throws, and I can't pronounce half the real judo throw names. I just say judo throw. So that's what it looks like from um, like some of the opens they have, especially with like the Olympics going on, although I thought that was a summer sport. I know they've... Every so often on YouTube, I do like to see the judo. It does look interesting. RK bro then the assisted floating bro that's pretty cool. Kevin Owens eats a backdrop on the table after saving Seth. Seth returns the favor by throwing Randy Orton over the table. Uh, Matt Riddle gets a hot tag. However, that doesn't last long. Kid just grabs Riddle's foot, brings him down. Seth hits the mosquito stomp, the Alberto Del Rio move, which should be like banned for life. Uh, Seth. And Rollins, uh, Seth Rollins, again, follow up with the senton, and, or, yeah, Seth and KO, follow up, they do the senton with a splash, he gets out, a true hot tag to Randy Orton, uh, there was a double snap power slam, that was really good to see, KO gets, eats the draping DDT, uh, uh, Riddle gets in the ring, going to finish him off, Kevin Owens is a smart wrestler, Matt Riddle was in it, wears shoes, so Kevin Owens just stomp, stomps on Alex Stomp on Matt Riddle's foot. Matt Riddle hit the floating bro. Seth breaks that up though. Seth does a tossing buckle bomb. And then KO does a stunner. And then Seth Rollins does a curb stomp. Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins earn their way to make it a tag team triple threat match. I'll tell you what, this was fun though. Kevin Kevin Owens and, and Seth Rollins talking throughout the entire match made it great. Orange so stoic. Riddles, I'll give him credit where credit is due. He's he's darn athletic. This was actually a, I thought a good match. It had some meaning behind it. 
I'll, I'll, I'll send the show off on a surf and surf note. So let's see here. Let's take a look at my calendar over here that I shoved because I was counting money. And there was a penny I missed, darn it. Well, that's some foreign money. Stupid foreigners. Uh, so let's see here. Yeah, put this in its proper place. Where it should properly go. So tomorrow I will be working on my NASCAR video. Look forward to that sometime tomorrow. Then I'll, at night, I'll also be doing my NXT review. Ooh, I get to watch NXT tomorrow. I'm having that for dinner. So that's always good. Wednesday, I'm all, ooh, I'm off Wednesday. Indeed. I do have a whole pile of stuff to do, though. Again, I'll be making a video for AEW. Thursday, I get to watch Impact Wrestling? The heck is this we coming to? And yeah, I have to work that day. But yeah, so really, well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, making videos. Friday's my birthday. Holla, holla, player. So yeah, I'm taking the entire night off. So I have to work anyway. Getting myself a cheesesteak pizza. Watching the movie Dune at my house. I'm going to tranquilo. Sorry.